let's take a look at the kinematic equations. So the word kinematic comes from an old Greek word, kineo, which means to move. So kinematic equations are really motion equations. Now they don't apply to all motion all the time, but we'll worry about when they apply and when they don't apply a little bit later. Sometimes they are also called the Suvat equations in IB, and the reason for that is because the kinematic equations are a mix of five different variables. And the variables are S, U, V, A, and T. The S represents displacement, the U represents initial velocity, the V represents final velocity, the A represents acceleration, and the T represents time. So I will write down the four equations that are considered the kinematic equations or the Suvat equations. And you'll see these four equations are different mixtures of those five variables. And you might be wondering where the heck did these equations come from? You know, why is there a t squared over here? Why are the velocities squared in this equation? It's not obvious where they come from, but they're not magic. Um, they weren't just randomly discovered. They can be found with the information we've looked at so far, and a sprinkling of a little additional information, and then some math backflips. But we're not going to derive them right now, and so for the moment, you'll just have to trust me. And there is a big condition that must be met for these equations to work. And that is that the acceleration must be constant. The kinematic equations only apply when the acceleration is constant. So if your acceleration is always increasing, if it starts out and it's one meter per second squared to the east, and then later on it's five meters per second squared to the east, you cannot use the kinematic equations. If your acceleration is two meters per second squared to the east, and it's always two meters per second squared to the east, then okay, you can apply the kinematic equations. Another way to say this is that the equations only apply when you have uniform acceleration. Uniform acceleration means that the acceleration is constant. Now be careful, that's different than uniform motion. Remember, uniform motion means that the velocity is constant. Uniform acceleration means that the acceleration is constant. Now one of the keys to using the kinematic equations correctly is that you have to know when to use which equation. And when you use which equation depends on the information that you have and the information that you want. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's look at each equation um, on its own. And what we'll do is we'll go through each equation and identify which variables are there. So for the first equation, let's see, what do we have? We have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. We have those four. So which one do we not have? We don't have displacement. So just to start out, I mean, we can see that if your problem gives you the displacement or wants you to solve for the displacement, well, this equation does not have displacement in it, so it's probably not the most direct path. All right. In the second equation, we have displacement, initial velocity, time, acceleration. We do not have the final velocity. So the second equation would not be very useful if you're trying to solve for the final velocity, or if you're given the final velocity, you would be able to use that information in this equation. The third one has initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and displacement. It does not have time. So that third equation does not have time in it. And then the fourth equation, we got displacement, final velocity, initial velocity, and time. The fourth equation does not have acceleration in it. So let's look at a quick example. Let's say that I tell you that an object has an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared to the east. Its initial velocity is 15 meters. And this goes on for 3 seconds. And I want to know what the displacement is during those 3 seconds. All right. So we know the acceleration. We know the initial velocity, we know the amount of time that passes, and we want the displacement. So the kinematic equation that's going to help us out has those four variables in it. Acceleration, initial velocity, time, and displacement. The kinematic equation, the only kinematic equation that has those four variables, and only those four variables, is s equals ut plus one-half at squared. So if we 
input all of the information that we have, we can solve for what we don't have. And I'll do the algebra here. Um, I'm carrying through the units, and you can see that the units work out. If you do the math correctly, and you carry the units through okay, you don't make any math mistakes, you get the correct unit in the end. You get a displacement of 67.5 meters. Now, one other question is, well, let's see, displacement's a vector, so it has to have a direction. So what's the direction of the displacement? Well, it's moving to the east at the beginning, and it accelerates to the east, so that means it gets faster and faster toward the east, so it must have traveled toward the east. It would be very surprising if it's moving to the east, but then it has a displacement in the direction of west. That would be strange. But that kind of reasoning is not necessarily the most direct path toward the answer. So let's look at another example, and I'll show you how you can deal with direction in these equations. Let's say that you have an initial velocity of 2 meters per second to the west, you have an acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared to the east, and this motion goes on for 3 seconds, and you want to know the displacement. So the key to this is that you want to choose a direction to be positive, and then the opposite direction will be negative. The most common thing to do is to pick east positive and west negative, and we also choose north positive and south negative usually, but that's not necessary. You could solve this problem and make west positive and east negative if you wanted to, and everything would work out. But we're going to do the common thing. We're going to say east is positive and west is negative. If you do that, well, let's see, which kinematic equation is going to help? Okay, we got u, a, t, and we want to solve for displacement, s. So we want s is equal to u, t plus one half a, t squared, again. When you put the numbers, when you put the values into the equation, if it's to the east, it will be a positive value, and if it's to the west, it will be a negative value. All right, we have an initial velocity that's to the west, so that will go in as a negative. Our acceleration is to the east, so that will go in as a positive. And then we solve, we solve, we solve, and we get that the displacement s is equal to negative 3.75 meters. This is not the answer. <laughs> this is almost the answer. The trick is that you gotta put it back in the language of the problem. That negative sign, you have to interpret that. So think about what that negative sign means. Well, we chose east to be positive and west to be negative. So if we get a negative answer, that is indicating to us that our displacement is to the west. So you got to take it back, take that negative sign, and put it back in the language of the problem. The displacement was 3.75 meters west.